right, we are live, everyone. What is up? My name is Jacob Cooker, but my friends call me Cub, and you should too. Welcome to the Cub Cooker Supernatural Podcast. Today we are talking about the very mystical, the very confusing, but the oh so addicting Book of Enoch. Um, we've been in a, a series, a study of the Book of Enoch for quite a while. And uh, I wanted to just dive even deeper into it today. Uh, We're going to be finishing up the uh, chapter we've been on for quite some time. It's going to be book two, book of the parables, chapter three. We're in the third parable. We're going to finish that today. And I just really wanted to look at the metaphysical angels and spirits that we've been seeing and experiencing through the book of Enoch. What do they mean? What do they have to do with everything? Thank you, Lynn. Uh, Interesting art. The art I came up with today was just kind of a, more of a painterly style. Um, and I wanted to talk about Enoch as Metatron. There's this whole theory that he's, um, you know, he was taken up into heaven um, and he was converted into the angel Metatron. I don't know about that so much as I do believe he's an archetype for Christ. I do believe that he was maybe even a, an early incarnation of Christ. Um, as Enoch, and then we see Melchizedek is another incarnation of Christ. Uh, we even see that Adam was an incarnation of Christ. That doesn't make sense when you believe the original sin doctrine, by the way. The, the idea that, you know, it was really Adam and Eve that sinned, rather than this lower God had them trapped in a garden. The serpent uh, brought them back the knowledge, the gnosis, that they were divine, um, and return them back to the knowledge of good and evil, uh, becoming like the God that had trapped them. Now, none of this is an exacting science of figuring out what is what and what makes sense together. Let me just say that. Uh, let me say that again. None of this is an exacting science. If you're looking for concrete answers when it comes to the world of biblical mythology, faith, spirituality, and the paranormal, which is what we study here on this channel, um, then it's, it's going to be very hard for you because, uh, concrete, anything around this is very difficult. We have a lot of knowledge, a lot of wisdom that's been lost, hidden, uh, transcribed, retranscribed, canonized or not canonized. Um, and even just twisted to make sure it fits a certain narrative. So with that said, we love everyone, every walk of life, faith, religion, um, every orientation, race, doesn't matter. Uh, as long as you're here in love and light, you're welcome. So my message is a universal message. It doesn't matter what we have literally have agnostics, atheists, we have psychics, we have mediums, we have, um, Christians, we have Jewish, we have, uh, Hindu, Buddhist, um, literally everyone in our community. I mean, We're a community of about uh, 400,000 people total on all different platforms, 400,000 different people. Uh, If you count all the resubscribes on all the different channels, I mean, we're we're well over half a million on all the channels, but but individual people, we're at the at least 350 to 400,000 individual unique people in this community. And uh, I'm very, very grateful for that. What is up, Merle? How are you doing? Um, John, Ryan, Beth, Lewis, what is up? Um, So we're going to get into it today, and um, my neck is going to quit hurting if I ever quit playing Frisbee. I don't know. I doubt it. Um, I love it. So (laughs) I'm planning on going today, and uh, it's my jam. I love playing me some Frisbee. Frisbee also uh, coincides with this whole Enoch thing. Enoch is a deep, deep study, a metaphysical study of um, what are the elements, what are the spirits of the elements. The idea that everything within creation has a spirit attached to it and it is merely an archetype of a higher spiritual being is not a new idea, guys. Uh, This goes back to Native American. It goes back to ancient, ancient India um, ancient, uh, Mesopotamia, Samaria. Um, this is, it's a universal idea. The idea that the sun has not just a physical energy, but a spiritual energy. And the idea that these energies we study within science, within 
our physics have a metaphysical counterpart that is attached to them that is actually giving the energy to them. Uh, we don't even know where energy comes from. So uh, it has to come from some area, some realm. Uh, the spiritual realm would make a whole lot of sense. Maybe these ancients knew something that we didn't. Uh, maybe they had experiences with the divine that we are not willing to have now because we have replaced it with doctrine, dogma, and I believe this rather than I want to experience that. Think about that. I believe this versus I want to experience that. Uh, Merle says, I soak up the sun energy and love it. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I do a lot of sun gazing, sun bathing, uh, not as a means to tan, obviously, but I just, I love to be in the sun. Uh, I do a lot of my prayer and meditation in the sun and it is, it is beautiful. User 2908 says, repent before it's too late. Uh, user 2908, uh, what's your name, my friend? Um, and then what am I repenting? What, um, why do you say that? Where does that come from? Uh, I say experience before it's too late experience before it's too late. Uh, turn around from the world, turn around from, uh, the, I got to do this. I got the job or the house or the, you know, whatever I got to blah, 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 blah. You know, what if we were to turn around to truly repent from that, to be in the world, but not of the world. Uh, rather than this life of sin that we've all been sold, what if we were to repent from mediocrity, from uh, the shame of not knowing our spiritual father? That's what I believe in. That's what I... Now, I've I've led myself into a life of sin and death before, trust me, uh, trying to follow the old law, the, the God in the Old Testament, the Yahweh. As we talked about, if you didn't, if you don't understand what I'm saying, I mean that in love and light. Go check out the video I posted this morning. It's airing right now on YouTube, actually. Um, and it's just, a, it's it's part two in this series. This is the Keys of Enoch series, by the way. So, uh, God bless. Truly hoping you all have an amazing and safe week. You too, uh, the Father in Heaven, thank you for being here. Um, so, with that said, um, let's see if I have any more comments. Nope. Okay, we're good. Uh, I got my wand today. A number two pencil works perfect for a wand. Uh, we talked about all of the, the magics and stuff, and Joshua and I are going through the magic of the uh, gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, and, you know, Christ was depicted early on uh, in a lot of different paintings and stuff of, of carrying a wand. Why is that important, guys? What is a wand? A wand is a tool, a tool for channeling energy, okay? Uh, you are a tool for channeling energy, too. These energies are metaphysical too from in where they're coming from according to the book of Enoch and according to a lot of ancient understandings and mysticism. Um, now, I'm not talking about worshiping these spirits. I'm not talking about these spirits are your savior. I'm talking about you understand that the savior is within you already and you're able to wield the frequencies, the energies, the spirits around you as an authority uh, as a manipulator of those frequencies. That's what Christ did. That's what all this energy healers and everything that's on online, that's what they're doing. And where are the roots? What is the fruit? Is it the fruit of the kingdom of God, the esoteric kingdom of God? I'm not talking about a religious kingdom. I'm not talking about the kingdom of heaven. I'm talking about the kingdom of God. Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you and within me. So are we going to wield those frequencies with authority Knowing that we have the love of God within us, that we are, that our birthright is with the Father. Are we going to remember that and wake up and transcend this physical matrix? Discord keeps popping on over here on my, on my desktop. So Lisa Marie, how are you, my friend? What is up? Uh, the Holly tree. Yeah, absolutely. Merle. Um, you know, uh, I was talking with Joshua, you know, so acacia wood is what the Ark of the Covenant was made out of. So there are two different types of technology in the Bible. There is, and I'm sorry, I've got another headache today because my, my back and my neck are killing me because I went and played Frisbee yesterday. Um, the acacia wood is very conductive. Um, and then it was plated with gold. And then you see that this Ark of the Covenant would shock people and unalive them just for touching it. And certain priests would have to wear certain uh, attire that was insulating 
This is all science, guys. Like the Bible, I mean, you know, anyone that this says, oh, the Bible doesn't have science in it. Like, just look at it. Look at the extraterrestrial technology that was being used to manipulate people, to control people, to bind them under the law that led to sin and death. Uh, look, look at it. Like it's all there. It's all there. Uh, sweetie pie 50. What is up? How are you? My friend? I did an experiment with a tree twig wands in my garden. Uh, they were play, uh, where they were placed and they grew more awesome. Kelly. That is awesome. Yeah. I mean, we can speak life. You know, that Toby Mac song speak life. It's not a joke. That doesn't just mean be encouraging to a neighbor. That means you have the breath of life. Speak life to things. Jesus cursed the fig tree and said, you will grow no more. You will produce no more fruit. Yes, that's esoteric, but I also believe it happened. You can speak life and you can speak other things. Where is that coming from? Why did he curse that tree? I don't, I don't know. I don't understand the depth of that parable. I know that there's a lot to it, but I uh, hope everyone is well. Uh, awesome, sweetie pie. Thank you for being here. Brian says, Wow, uh, my whole bed is made from acacia wood. Dude, that's awesome. That is awesome. Uh, so acacia wood is is a beautiful wood. I have two tables, two tables made out of acacia wood. They're farm-style tables. I got them at World Market on sale. They were normally like four or 500 bucks a piece. I got them for like 199 each. I've had them for years now, years. They're like writing desks, and they're beautiful. And And the wood is like... You can scratch it and just like rub olive oil on it and it'll soak in and it just becomes even more beautiful. There's something amazing about acacia wood. Hollywood is very, very similar. Um, you start understanding like why all of these certain things in the Bible. What's up, Annie? How are you doing? Um, Annie, I'm thinking about what you texted or you messaged me, by the way. Uh, Annie's part of our Mythos community. If you don't know about the Mythos community and you love what I'm doing, it's a great way you can support my message and my content make sure I get to do this full time, uh, all the time. That's what that community does is support me. Um, and in turn, we have a private group with that. Uh, we're doing pop-up group calls in there. I've got behind the scenes content. Um, it's just a really cool way that you can get more involved in what we're doing here. It's only nine bucks a month. It's over on my website. If you jump over there as soon as this is over, or even right now, sign up. I promise you, I celebrate every single person that does sign up on that. I'm also going to start giving shout outs on here. I try to do my best. Like we got Annie in there. We've got, uh, Merle is in there. We have several other people that I saw in here that are a part of that community. So, um, anyway, thank you guys for the support. Um, and just being a part of that community, that mythos community also gets to see early stuff that I do. They got to see one of the audio meditations that I'm working on. I've got an audio meditation program, um, if you want to check it out, it's at www.cubcooker.com. Uh, I decided to go ahead and pre-sell it. It's going to be $99 and, uh, it'll be a one-time payment and you're going to be able to download all of the meditations that come with that. And even the ones that I add to that. So there'll be, uh, different ones within that. Um, but this first series is the Enochian meditation series. Um, and so it's on for 29 bucks right now. It's separate from the mythos, but the mythos has gotten a little taste of what's going to be in there. But I decided to really focus the meditation series. It's original music that I create. Um, if you like music like chill hop, synth wave, yogic music, uh, Eastern spirituality music, you're going to love this program. It's beautiful music. And then I meditate, um, and paint mindscapes with it and walk the user through mindscapes. Merle knows he, he did the, uh, the one called protoplasm. That's actually in the mythos group right now. Uh, said he had an incredible experience with it. Um, and, and I have too, I even listened to myself back on those cause I'm all about natural ways to like calm down, raise the frequency, lower the anxiety, chill out and really just try to receive divine inspiration. Um, and so meditation is a great way that I do that. Yoga is a big part of that. Uh, I'm going to teach some basic yoga poses with that. That will be basically, uh, they're not going to be a part of each audio meditation, but there is going to be like a short master class on, uh, on yoga poses that you can do. And you can combine these poses with the mindscapes. It's going to be a thing that you can do and paint yourself within your own spirituality. And I'm really excited about it. I wanted to have it out by Christmas and I thought, let's just pre-sell it. Let's see what we can 
do get you know give me a reason to to start pumping out music and audio meditation in there the reason i bring that up is enoch is is a mindscape i could literally just read from the book of enoch put music to it and it would be a mindscape that's not what i'm doing with the meditation program um, it's my own it's it's based on the ideas in enoch but it's not like following enoch or anything it's it's you you in the place of enoch basically so it's all it's all my own made up mythology of you know walking you through a realm that is uh in spirit and in truth and just a beautiful beautiful world that i really think you're going to appreciate very different than my other work but based on the same concepts you hear every day on this podcast the book of Enoch walks us through, we see about the fallen angels. We hear about um, Enoch going up before God and he's taken and he's shown the mysteries of basically the four corners of the earth. Now understand this too, this is not a flat earth or a round earth debate whatsoever. This is a mythology. Let's, let's read it as that. Um, I believe Enoch is... Uh, yeah, I believe he was a real person, but I believe he's an archetype. And an archetype, I wanted to just define this for everyone. An archetype is a very typical example of a certain person or thing. Uh, the book is a perfect arch archetype of the genre. So Enoch might be the perfect archetype of the ascended man, the man that has a deep desire for knowledge. He even asks the angels over and over, I must know the secrets. I must know. Please share them with me. And it's super, super important. Um, yeah, Preston, let me answer that in just a second. It is super important um, that we that we walk with Enoch as the self, as the higher self in this journey. Not to, to necessarily read this and try to understand a biblical, historical, canon-based narrative of the Bible, but rather to just detach ourselves from the world we think we know and walk through the metaphysical realms of creation as defined as being monitored, controlled, manipulated, and, and really groomed and taken care of, if you will, by angelic beings, which we might call extraterrestrials today, who are taking care of certain elementals within creation Elementals being things like the hoarfrost, the frost, the snow, uh, the rains, the thunders, the lightnings, each one having a spirit attached to it. What is a spirit other than an energy? Okay. And so that's what this is really about. So when I talk about sun gazing, when I talk about going outside and being in the sun, I'm not telling you to go blind yourself and stare at the sun. Sun gazing, you know, is merely I, I go out and I'll look at it for just a second and then I'll close my eyes and and, and hold the image of it and meditate on the energy coming from it and the presence of God within it, within the frequency of light. Uh, when Christ is in the world, he is the light of the world. When we meditate, we can emit photons. They've, they've done studies on that. We are supposed to be deeply and intimately connected to the light. And we've been lied to, guys. This whole, uh, even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. That has gone on too long around all of the interwebs. I'm here to tell you what I do believe that that means is Yahweh in the Old Testament cloaked himself in light. It's even, he's even described as, it, it says, Oh, uh, mighty one, you, uh, you cover yourself in light as a cloak or a disguise. Um, also, when Christ is talking, he says, when you take an oath, you know, do not take an oath for that is of the devil, but let your yes be yes and your no be no. And so Yahweh in the Old Testament, how many oaths did he make? He swore by this. He swore by that. He even swore by himself and by creation. Why do you need an oath from a God? From the God. But I guess you need an oath from a God. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the idea that the God of the Old Testament is not the spiritual father that Christ was speaking of. It's not a new idea. It's an idea that I had that scared the heck out of me in the shower about six months ago. And it's completely flipped my entire mission on its head. Because the more I dig into that, the more truth I see. I've got dozens and dozens and dozens of verse parallels where Christ says something and is directly in, in conflict or contrast to 
something that Yahweh did, said, or was associated with in the Old Testament. And there goes my pencil. Um, and I can I can sit there and go through it and prove it to you all day long, but you have to have the revelation of it. And so I'm not really here to teach that doctrine so much as like, if you want to really get what I'm talking about, you have to be willing to just like detach yourself from doctrine, dogma, and all of these traditions that we think we know here in the West and get back to something more ancient, more mystical, um, the yogas, to get back to the meditation, get back to the unity with creation, finding God in the creation within the matrix. He's always there. He's always breaking through. Uh, the gods of the Bible are aliens or Anunnaki posing as such. Yeah, absolutely. I believe so. Um, you know, I'm a big ancient astronaut theorist. I believe that, you know, angels are aliens, are extraterrestrials. Lisa Marie says, fact. Yeah, thank you very much. Kelly uh, Crooks says, right. Uh, what's up, Smoka? How are you doing? Um, so, yeah, um, I really do believe, like, um, I, I don't believe all extraterrestrials are bad, by the way. Like, the, just like angels, there's good and there's bad ones. There's angels of light, angels of darkness, you know. So I would say there's different classifications of extraterrestrials that some are here for the ascension of humanity. Some are here uh, to continue to try and deceive and work on the side of Hasatan. As we saw earlier, Elohim, that means the Elohim, the God or the Satan. So the God and the Satan are the antithesis of each other. Yet we see we have Yahweh Elohim, which is the God Yahweh. Um, and we see that that is in stark contrast to, to who Christ was talking about. So, uh, Kelly Crooks says, uh, two sides and in between to everything. Absolutely. Sounds Arabic. Sir Duke says, um, yeah, Hebrew is, is actually what Hasatan and, uh, Elohim means, uh, lots of the sounds. Uh, and I'm not very good at speaking it for sure, but um, I'm doing better with the Greek for sure. But uh, Elohim, so yeah, Elohim is plural for gods. Capital Elohim can mean the supreme god or magistrate. Uh, Elohim can mean the god. Uh, Yahweh Elohim can mean the god of Israel. Um, and that's where um, we've lost a lot of the understanding because we don't understand the etymology of the words. And sometimes when people would transcribe it, they would just go, well, that means the same thing. You know, uh, when you start studying this and you get into the Strong's Concordance and you understand the different classifications of these entities, very, very, very polytheistic. Okay, the idea of monotheism is not even a thing. Okay, unfortunately, we have a lot of people that believe in monotheism. There's only one God. There's a lot of gods. There's historically a ton of gods. They are all over the place. And when we just go... Oh, I believe in monotheism. You can believe in a highest God, but there is evidence for millions of gods all through not just the Bible, but other ancient spiritual texts. Get into Hinduism and you see huge pantheons, huge pantheons of gods, all of them being archetypes for some part of humanity. Did they actually reign over humanity at some point as these extraterrestrial gods on the earth? Sure. Maybe they did. I don't know. I wasn't there. So, um, uh, Teresa says, uh, who is the real God? I pray to Yahweh. Teresa, I know I, I'm right there. I used to sing the songs to Yahweh and everything. I was big into the Hebrew roots thing. And I'm not saying anything against it. I'm just saying there was no fruit there for me. Uh, the If you want to go biblically, what is the biblical, like the true God, like the highest God within the biblical narrative? Now, not the church narrative, but the biblical narrative. You need to look up a god named El Elyon or El, okay? He was represented by uh, a bull. He was the highest god in the uh, Canaanite and Sumerian pantheons, uh, depending on where you want to pin him on. But um, within the cradle of civilization, you had El Elyon, who was married to Asherah, who had, uh, they together had a son. Uh, that son, I believe, is Christ. It's pretty clear from, uh, God bless you, Teresa says, absolutely. That son, I believe, is Christ. Um, and so if you think about the original uh, divine trinity, we, we've been told Father, 
son and holy spirit and the original understanding of that was father mother son the divine feminine and the divine masculine the esoteric representation of combining those two elements within self become the logos or the christ energy within you uh, allowing you to ascend just as enoch as i talk about enoch being an archetype just like he ascended because he he deeply yearned for knowledge and truth beyond the physical world and he was taken up and he was shown mysteries of it he was it says he walked with god and then he was no more did he actually disappear was he taken up in a spaceship i don't know uh but i definitely know the archetype of that as we're talking about today is the idea that uh, you deeply want knowledge. You deeply want not knowledge like book knowledge, but gnosis, this idea of like where wisdom meets knowledge. What is knowledge is divinely masculine. Wisdom is divinely feminine. All of this is in your Bible, by the way. Um, I don't approach this from like a, a, a Christian, you know, like necessarily a Christian angle, uh, though I was raised Christian. I consider myself a Christ follower, a uh, mystic, a light worker, a spiritualist, not um, an actual Christian by definition, because that's, that's going to limit me, unfortunately, on even exploring some of these topics. Uh, Akashic records. Absolutely. Um, uh, so with that, you know, Enoch being the archetype of, of the man that deeply wants the knowledge and the wisdom combined together becomes the gnosis. The gnosis bears the logos. The logos is the divine expression of God. When the Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, um, that that word for word is logos. Logos literally means the divine expression or computation. It can mean something said. Uh, that's the common meaning. But the divine meaning for it is the expression, the divine expression or the computation of God. Uh, let's see. Spiritualist plus sciences of QP. What is QP? Um but yeah, I like spiritualist and science, definitely. Uh, Enoch never died. He was transmuted. Yeah, I, I mean, I believe that. But again, even if he wasn't physically, even if this is a mythology, because everything I teach, if you take it literally, it works. If you take it uh, esoterically, it works. Like I, nothing I teach do you have to believe literally or you have to believe it esoterically. I think you can believe both or one or the other and still come away with what I'm trying to say. And so that's a big, you know, part behind my mission is really trying to make sure uh, that I'm balanced on both sides of that. So my thought behind like Enoch being taken by God, like he was no more is Enoch, the man ceased to exist and Enoch, the risen, the Christ form, the ascended man of Enoch, which by the way, you and I can both attain once we, you know, leave, uh, being in the world, uh, and of the world, we're in the world, but not of the world. And so that's a big, big distinction, um, between those two things. And, oh, my wife is home. It sounds like, so this is a good time to get a drink and kick the dogs out. And then I'll finish up the broadcast here. Cause I'm going to go play Frisbee. So, um, I'm going to continue this tomorrow. So, uh, because we've got the angels, that are managers of all of these elements on the earth, which are all attached to a spirit, according to the book of Enoch. So I really want to get into that tomorrow. This will be like part one. I'll label it part one of that, which I think I'll lay the groundwork for this. All of this is going into a playlist on my YouTube channel. You can find my YouTube channel. It's uh, the, the playlist is called the keys of Enoch. This is a brand new series. We're going to be in for a while because I've got a new understanding of Enoch and I really want to unpack it freshly with this whole concept. Uh, so anyway, yeah, stretch dude. Absolutely. That's what I'm going to do. Kelly. Thank you very much. Uh, who is the picture behind me? This is just uh, a very, very abstract, uh, almost like a stained glass looking picture of Enoch here. So I just thought it was kind of cool. I may throw it on a shirt for you guys. If you like it, if you like my artwork, I've got a whole t-shirt shop on my website as well. If you guys want to get a t-shirt for Christmas, order now, like today, yesterday, and you might get it by Christmas. So um, there's a coupon code at the top of the page right now where you can get free shipping once you hit the t-shirt website. So uh, anyway, the wife is home. I'm going to go visit with her and then go play Frisbee. I love you guys. Check out part two. Part two will be um, 
on let's see it'll be monday monday because uh, i'm not going to stream tomorrow but i will stream sunday morning at 11 a.m central standard time for our esoteric reading of the gospel so thank you guys for watching y'all have a great afternoon and i will see you monday for more in this series because it gets super super deep so join me for that thank you for the support um temple says i love your videos you make me think uh, awesome. Thank you very much. Temple, consider joining us in the Mythos group um, if you haven't already. It's really cool. If you like what we're doing here, you can support what we're doing, and we have even more conversations uh, within that. We are going to be doing a pop-up call with the Mythos group probably tomorrow. It sounds like most people are more available on Saturday, so we'll be doing a pop-up call with you guys probably tomorrow. So anyway, love you, love you guys. You'll have an awesome day. Thank you again for the support. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.